analyzing the site is going to be a big part of site planning. So this is understanding the site and the impact of the site on your design process, uh, your design decision making, uh, as well as the physical details of, of the design. Uh, what is analysis of the site really about? Well, there's a whole range of different issues, from the regulatory environment to the climate issues, to what the soils are like, where the utilities are, uh, is this a feasible project, and what are the logical urban forms in the area. So there's a whole range of these different issues that will uh, likely show up on the exam and are sort of part of that thinking of like, well, uh, what is it about the site that's going to help me design or impact my design uh, in sort of in important and informative ways. So as we go th through this discussion, we'll get more and deeper into these things, but just to sort of run through them kind of quickly, regulatory environment, you're talking about things like uh, the zoning code, uh, you're talking about uh, how uh, covenants and easements work, things along those lines. Uh, macro and microclimate uh, are different ways of thinking about all the sort of climatic issues of sun and wind and rain and all of that, uh, which we'll talk more about in a minute. Orientation is always, uh, when you see orientation in the context of, uh, of the exam, it's almost always talking about solar orientation. Uh, so that's meaning how does the path of the sun in the summer and the winter and various other times in between, how does that impact where you might uh, design different aspects of the, of the project, uh, how you might place them on the site, what wants to get sunlight, what wants to get natural sunlight, what wants to get solar gain, what doesn't want to get solar gain. So understanding the relationship, the orientation of the building to the sun, and especially how it is impacted by uh, fenestration decisions, window decisions, uh, how that sunlight is going to come through, how that solar gain is going to come through. That's definitely a big part of the site planning exam, and we'll talk about that. Uh, topography, the lay of the land. Um, it clearly is important to sort of understand if I have a, a landform that's uh, a lot of up and down, well, it's going to have wet areas, it's going to have uh, sight line issues if I'm trying to stand here and old, see the amazing view, but oh, I can't, right, because the topography is impacting it. These are uh, going to impact my decision making and, and the physicality of the designs that I'm going to choose. Uh, you know, if I really want to get that view, well, maybe I raise the floor up higher so that my person is now uh, up higher. Right? That was a uh, design decision that had to be uh, designed in order to answer the issue of the site and the topography. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, utilities. Utilities are sort of this key thing that uh, can hugely impact the cost of a project and therefore the viability of a project. Uh, does the site have utilities? Are, does the municipality have water and sewer lines going to the site? Uh, probably in the road right of way. Or does it not? If you're in a more rural setting, you might have to have wells or septic systems that are sort of standalone systems. What about electricity? Does a, is there an electrical power line that's nearby? Are there transformers nearby? If there aren't, and there's a great deal of cost to get the electricity to the site, that's something that can make or possibly break a project, and you might not be able to continue on with it because the feasibility just isn't logical given where the utilities actually are. Uh, so understanding how the utilities will impact some of your design decision making and where they are is kind of an important thing, and that's the kind of thing that you hopefully will find uh, in your survey information that the client gives you, but you may have to do investigations on your own. Uh, it clearly has an impact, and uh, that's sort of getting used to that, getting used to the understanding of how those impacts are is kind of a useful thing for you to think about. Uh, something you probably wouldn't necessarily think would be a big deal in site planning is the idea of soils. Now, clearly soils are important, uh, so you know, you, you're definitely going to uh, want to think about soil uh, when you're designing a building, um, but it, it isn't necessarily obvious that the soils would be part of site planning. It might be more of the building design or construction issues, things like that, but it actually shows up a great deal in site planning. And why would that be? Because the soil capacity, the bearing capacity of the soil, is one of the major driving forces of where on a site you can build or whether you can build at all. Uh, if I have really terrible soil and I, I'm going to have to go down you know, hundreds of feet to get to bedrock uh, in order to build a building of the scale that I'm trying to build, well, that's a big cost decision 
And I would really want to know that early on in the site planning process so that we were accommodating those numbers. We're, we're uh, building that into our pro forma and our cost issues so that the uh, clarity of the soil condition will be impacted in all those important ways that we're not surprised by it later. Right? We want to have a really clear vision about how that works. Where, conversely, I also might find that I have very um, easy soil to work with, uh, or one part of the site is very easy soil and another part has uh, maybe really high water table or something along those lines that's gonna make it very difficult. Well, those are ways that I can say, well, why don't we build in the easy part? It's gonna have a good, huge cost impact. Now, there are plenty of other things that would impact location. Just because the soils are good uh, in one spot doesn't mean that's the place you're going to go, but it is one of the decision-making processes in site planning understanding the soils and how that's going to be impacted uh, through the cost, through the design, all of those uh, uh, ways of thinking about planning. Intriguingly, uh, soils information is one of those things that you actually don't usually go out and get as an architect. Usually that's given to you by the owner uh, from soils reports, soil bearing reports, and we'll, we'll talk about all of those issues uh, a little bit later, but that concept of really thinking about the different patterns of soils on a site make a big, big difference. Obviously, if we're talking about site planning, uh, you can't not think about the idea of context. If we're in a rural setting, it's a very different context than, say, right downtown in an urban setting. Uh, so the context is going to have a massive impact on planning, where the front door is, where the uh, outdoor spaces are, where the sort of logical placement on a site. Those are all uh, going to be hugely uh, impacted by the issues of context. So you want to start thinking about like, well, how could a question come at me that would be about urban form and context uh, and what's logical? Uh, how does logical form make sense uh, in a given setting? When do I want to encourage uh, privacy? When do I want to encourage uh, uh, transparency? Um, those are all sort of contextual issues uh, and use issues. Um, I don't really want to encourage privacy if I'm talking about a commercial structure that's trying to be open to the public. If I'm talking about uh, uh, residential elements, I may very well want to have very private areas that people can congregate without being out in the public. Uh, those ideas of porches and semi-public and semi-private, uh, those things, those are all uh, urban form concepts that uh, understanding the relationship of the situation to the place uh, is kind of important in some of that design decision making. And it's also the kind of question that they like to ask, something where they give you sort of a proposal of an idea and then here's a couple of different uh, issues that might drive the decision about whether you're gonna do that idea or not do that idea. So the urban form is the kind of thing that can really impact that kind of decision making. Opportunities is really thinking about when you do a site analysis, what what is there that isn't sort of obvious or isn't from another place? When you start thinking about feasibility, you're not just thinking about is what I'm doing feasible, is the, is the project at hand feasible, but you're also thinking about, well, are there other possibilities? So uh, if I have a lot of site area, but there's a very dramatic parking shortage in the neighborhood, maybe I have all this extra site area, I'm gonna do the project we're gonna do, but we're gonna put a big parking lot in the back because that's an opportunity. It's a, it's a moment that's about this site in this context that is uh, plausible to help a development. There's a lot of other ways to think about opportunities, but just uh, kind of understanding that those uh, things impact the design decision, and that's one of the ideas of site analysis, is you're looking past just what's on the table, just like what the project is and what, where I'm standing on the site, but really understanding the place and how that can impact some of your design decision making. Right. Feasibility, catchment, uh, these are all issues about kind of that preliminary process of really thinking through uh, before the schematic design, uh, is this the right building for the right place? Does uh, this spot gather the users that make sense for the use that's actually gonna make it have a, a reasonable return on investment? Uh, so that will show up a great deal. It also shows up in some of the other exams, but. This is something that is likely to happen in the exam. You're likely to get questions about issues of feasibility, when is a logical time to do a feasibility study, a market study, performas, those kinds of things, and when does it not really matter? What kind of advice would you give an owner uh, in different situations? Uh, one up here is sort of social norms and, and behavior uh, issues. Thinking about these uh, concepts, uh, it sounds sort of odd, right? It sounds like, well, what are you talking about, social norms and behavioral expectations? 
What that's really referring to is the idea right. that design should have a sort of logic to it and that people should have a basic expectation to understand uh, where the front doors are, how to, how to maneuver to a site, how to understand their, their wayfinding uh, on a site or through, uh, through a building. Right. These are issues of sort of patterns and precedents that people have been used to and are sort of expectant of. Now, as a designer, you may decide from a design standpoint to go counter to an expectation or to a social norm. And that's fine as a designer, but you should have an understanding from a site planning standpoint what the expectations are so that either you can follow those expectations or you can play with them, you can go counter to them. So that's, a, that's a, another part that's a, a little harder to ask questions of, but they, they will definitely ask you questions of, but it's hard to prepare for those because what, you know, what are they gonna ask? It could be almost anything. Uh, but the idea that there are expected ways that designs happen for different types of uses and that you should have an understanding of what those are because those impact the base site planning, the base thinking about how you're gonna do schematic design on a project. Uh, and then uh, lastly down here, the parking and street access. Uh, that seems like kind of a little minor afterthought, but let me tell you, parking has killed more projects than almost anything. Uh, parking regulations in a lot of places are a big, big deal uh, because they take up a massive amount of space. And if you're in urban settings, you often don't have a lot of space. Right. So often you'll find with certain kinds of uses, the parking area is actually larger than the building area. Uh, and so from a site planning standpoint, well, that's big, right? You have to really understand the scale of parking in order to make sure that from an uh, analytical standpoint, a site analysis standpoint, does this project make sense in this location? Can I get enough square footage? Uh, would I have to put the parking on the roof and therefore there's a bunch of cost implications, et cetera, et cetera. So kind of analyzing the site to understand the, the use type, uh, that includes uh, understanding the parking and the relationship to that, to the building. There are plenty of examples where parking is not important because it's only one or two spaces and you got plenty of room. In a lot of projects, parking will drive the viability. So this is one of those things that we're very likely to show up on the exam in some form, just sort of your understanding of the scale of parking, square footages, numbers, those kinds of things. So we'll talk about that a little bit as well.